everyone, welcome to, I think this is episode 53 of the Love Sock Wool Podcast. My name is Sarah and thank you for joining me today. It's November 1st, 2017. So let's get started with, um, with the episode. I have socks to show you. I have half finished shawls that I've bound off because I'm on a clear off all my needles kick right now. And so I will show them to you today. Okay, I had to pause and go put on some lipstick so I don't look dead. How are you guys doing? I was just gathering the rest of my things. I am recording in a slightly different location today in my new setup for where I can sew. So I might try to lift up and do a little pan around. This is where I can sew and I have all these windows. This is where our piano used to be, right on this wall. But we moved it and now my sewing desk, or sewing table is here. And it's lovely because there's lots of windows and it's just my happy spot. I, I love this corner of the house. It's my favorite room in the house. It's not even a room, it's just an area off of the living room. <laughs> so I'm really happy to have my own table to sew and set up all my fabric and I've got knitting stuff in that box right there. I've got a chair with my quilt on it and it's just really fun. So I'm really thankful to have this spot. Um, it's been a game changer. Everyone needs their own spot in the house with just their things so you know where they are and can find them. Okay, so um, yesterday was Halloween. It was very cold here. It was like 35 degrees while we were trick-or-treating, maybe colder. It was very chilly. We didn't stay out for very long. So the good thing with that is we didn't get as much candy, <laughs> which is actually kind of good because I eat it. I'll just keep eating it until it's gone. So last year we had way more candy than we do this year. So this is a good thing. Um, so today is November 1st, which means it's the start of the 12 Socks of Christmas Cow. Are you, do you, are you excited? Do you want to knit your Christmas socks yet? I'll be honest with you, I don't feel like knitting Christmas socks yet. But I pulled out all of my Christmas socks that I have finished in past 12 Socks of Christmases, cow, and I'll show them to you. <laughs> and all my single socks that still need second socks knit for them. So maybe just looking at them and showing them to you, maybe it'll inspire me to cast on some of the second socks and get excited about knitting Christmas socks. But honestly, I still want to knit Halloween and fall socks because it still feels like it's the fall season. It is still the fall season. It really is through Thanksgiving, right? I'll show you Hippo for Thanksgiving. Did I show you this? Probably not because I think it came since last time I recorded. This is Hippo from, for Thanksgiving from Lolo Did It. I love it. I think I'm going to cast this on today because it's November 1st and I would like to have them going in the month of November. Okay, I cannot remember what socks, what finished so socks I showed you last time I recorded. Did I show you Hip Over Halloween? I don't remember. I'm done with them. <laughs> with a lucky Lolo Did It Fish Lips Kiss Heel and Troll Hair Toe. And this is Hippo for Halloween on the plush sock base. I enjoyed knitting these so much and I was very proud of myself for getting them done before Halloween. I didn't wear them on Halloween. I actually pulled out my Regia Perfect socks, the orange and the purple colored one, and I wore those yesterday and they are very cozy. They might be my favorite socks to wear right now. I'm very glad I put them on. <laughs> okay, the other pair I finished is um, Camel City Dye Works Bug Juice, which is this fun speckled, and this is Purple People Eater. And it's both, both these yarns are Camel City Dye Works. And it's a lovely dyer from um, North Carolina, my home state. So I finished these two weeks ago, actually. Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I love how they turned out. They're really fun. I have tons of yarn left over because I did all the contrast. He also, I probably could make three pairs of socks out of both skeins if I'm careful with yarn management. So. so I would like to eventually make a purple sock with contrast bug juice, which I think would be really fun. Excellent specklage on this sock. 
it was very enjoyable to knit. Okay, I think I have 20 pairs of socks that I have knit this year for my box of socks. That's crazy. Would you like to see the 20th pair? I have posted these on Instagram, so perhaps you have seen them. I am Love Sockle on Instagram if you would like to follow me there. But I finished my scrappy socks. It was completely inspired by Amy of Exterminate on Instagram. She's always knitting scrappy socks. And I just love her, seeing her photos on Instagram. And I was so inspired and I had to make myself a pair. This, both of these socks, I knit in one week. That is how quickly these guys knit up. They absolutely knit themselves because you can't wait to get to the next color because you're only, I well, the way I do it, I don't know how other people do it, but I'm just knitting 10 rows of each color and it just, they just knit themselves. I did a 28 row, two by two ribbing for both cuffs. This one has three different colors in the cuff. This one has just two. And I'm not gonna go through what all of the yarns are because that would take forever, but I just enjoyed knitting these so very much. I need to get another scrappy sock going because I wanna always have one on the go because they're so fun. And it's such a lovely project because you you just knit with the yarn you wanna knit with for that 10 rows. So like if you're itching to knit with a certain yarn but you don't really wanna to commit to an entire project, just throw 10 rows in a scrappy sock and then you get to see how it knits up and then you get the enjoyment of knitting the yarn you want to knit at the time that you want to knit it without oh, casting on 47,000 socks, which I do anyway, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's just nice to have a guilt-free project to knit with any yarn you want to knit with. Okay, so for instance, these three stripes right here. This is, well, all three of these are Volan Fine yarns. This is Bouche de Noel, one of Christian's Christmas colors from last year, and I've had it wound up forever, but had not cast it on, but now I got to see how it knits up, and I love it. And as I was knitting these 10 rows, I was like, oh my goodness, I wanna knit these socks. <laughs> so that might, this might have to get cast on for the 12 socks of Christmas very soon. And then this stripe is Goth Day Cake, and it's so pretty, look at that. It's like a dark charcoal with purple and teal speckles and then this is angry orchard and I just oh I love how all three of those knit up so anyway it's a, it's fun to have a way to knit in the round to see how a sock yarn will knit up without committing to an entire project just yet you know what I'm saying I think you do so yay so now that I've shown these I can wear them because I can't wait to to see how cozy these are to wear and the thing that is so fun about knitting scrappy socks is that, okay, I can cast on a third scrappy sock, you know, knit to the same length and whatnot, um, and just keep knitting single scrappy socks because they all obviously will go with any other scrappy sock. So you don't ever have to knit a pair. You just keep knitting single scrappy socks. Perfect for me, right? <laughs> If you're anything like me, then they're perfect for you too. So, so yay, now I get to wear these. Maybe I'll put these on after I'm done recording. Okay, I think that's all the pairs of socks I have knit. Um, I have my basket of second sock whips that I'm trying to plow through. I don't even know what's in here. Um, okay, so last time I showed you um, Lolo did it, Dobby, so or Dobby Socks, I think that's what she calls these. Um, yeah, Dobby Socks. It's such a gorgeous colorway, and I have made quite a bit of progress on sock number two. So I am on the gusset, making some progress, but I haven't picked this up in several days. I worked on it last week and then put it down. But I love it. I want to finish these. Gorgeous color, so autumnal. Okay, and then, um, oh, is it in here? Yes, okay. I think I had not finished this. This is um, Ghostbusters by Lilo Did It. <clears throat> Which 
I have finished in the, since the last time we spoke <laughs> and I've got sock number two and let go everything is a delightful tangle I'm not even finished with the cuff but we're getting close don't you just love that bee stitch marker it's one of the ones from Michaels it's my favorite one I love the bee it reminds me of a pin that Tuppence found in Tommy and Tuppence the secret adversary which if you have not seen that I think you can watch it on acorn media which I don't have a subscription to but I love that that old Tommy and Tuppence the secret adversary but anyway she finds um, Tuppence is walking in a park with Tommy and she sees a pin lying on the ground and it kind of looks like this and I think that's why it's my favorite stitch marker because it reminds me of Tommy and Tuppence. <laughs> okay, so this is Ghostbusters and uh, I really wanted to get this done in time for Halloween, but I didn't. It's all right. And this is also on the plush sock base, which is delightful to knit. Okay, other socks I have knit. I don't think I showed you guys this sock the last time. I recorded I think I just forgot about it and this was also inspired by Amy of exterminate fame um this is the burrow by no makers and I've had it in my stash for a while but I just you know haven't knit it up yet and Amy recently finished um, the same sock yarn I think a month ago or so and I remember seeing pictures of it on her Instagram feed and being like that is just so fun I want to do it too so I, I cast it on and I did contrast heels and toes in um, a homespun house, uh, Grandma Sue's geraniums. And I think it looks really nice. And I do have the second sock going. Very lovely. Okay. All right. I also have on the go, do you guys remember back in January, I think it was January, maybe it was February, I was knitting um, Nomadic Yarns, Fred and George for the Weasley knit along that Jilly in the Knitting Broomstick was hosting. And I got the first sock done pretty quickly, but then never cast on the second one until like a week ago. So I got the second one going and I'm, I'm almost done working up the foot I mean the leg I did these toe up obviously and I love how the fish lips kiss turned out I just I didn't do anything obviously special <sighs> for the heel I didn't I wasn't concerned about the stripage what I do is I just knit the heel and then before I start in the round again I just pull off yarn to get back to where at the same point that I was at on the foot and then that way you don't break up the stripes on the on the instep. I love this yarn so much. It's really, really fun. My favorite stripe is the speckly one. <laughs> it's so Fred and George. Okay. I have not made as much as much or any progress on my spellcaster sock. This is another Halloween sock. This is Adelaide Cottage. I love it. I have the first sock done. But it's um, Adelaide Cottage Spellcaster on her sparkle base. And it is so beautiful. I love it. But I haven't worked on this one in a while. I need to pick it back up again. Okay, other single socks I finished. I, had, I, don't ha I haven't had a sock on the go for Juliet in a while. So I quickly whipped out a first sock for her. But of course have not cast on the second one. Yeah, these will probably be her Christmas socks this year, because um, I don't have I don't have any other pairs going for her. So this is No Makers Berry No Me, and I've had this for a while. I love it. I have wanted to knit it forever, and so I finally cast it on, and I love how it's knitting up. A little little child size sock. So this is 56 stitches. I probably honestly could have done 52. I probably could even do 48 still for her because she's got skinny little legs and feet. But I figure I might as well make them a little on the big side so that she can grow into them. 
provided she doesn't lose them before she grows any bigger, which she probably will. But we do our best. But isn't that fun how that knits up? I really enjoyed knitting this little sock. And it's just a, you know, traditional slip stitch. I think I did a Dutch, yeah, like a square heel. Yeah. I love it. I knit it so fast. I think I knit this sock in about three days, but then <laughs> I haven't cut on the second one yet. I will. I will. Then I have, okay, so this basket is all second socks, and I'm really am trying to focus on only working on the socks that are in this basket because they're all second socks, and if I finish them, I will have pairs. So I really haven't been doing a whole lot of, you know, reckless so casting on of new socks just because I am trying to pare down how many sock whips I have. I think I have 24 sock whips total, if, I, if I'm honest, <laughs> which isn't bad because it used to be 30. So I've made progress. All right, get, get these guys put back where they go. All right, I have another, one more sock whip to show you. I'm really excited about because it's a new sock pattern that I had not tried before. So a while back, I had started watching, I forget the name of the podcast. I forget what they're calling it. But it's Stacy of Mustache Yarns and Anne from Little Skein. They're doing a, a joint podcast. I think they have three episodes out. And their first episode, um, Stacy was knitting a toe-up sock in, in one of her lovely, lovely Beatles the colorways, the, the white album. And she was doing this pattern, and it's called Toe-Ups for All by Sivia Harding, and it is a paid for pattern on Rav Ravelry. Um, but the thing that is so lovely about this toe up sock pattern is that it has a gusset and it has a built in slip stitch heel, which I love because it, it looks like a traditional sock. You know, it doesn't just have a, you know, a short row heel with no gusset and, which is fine too. But for me, I, I really do like having, having that gusset there. So let me put this on the sock blocker. Um, so I had never tried this pattern before, and so I'm still probably not quite getting the fit quite, quite right. I might have to tinker with it a little bit. The thing that is interesting, though, is that this pattern has a very long gusset. And so I initially had knit the foot a little bit too long. I had to rip back because I was doing the math. And I'm like, if you have to increase to X number of stitches, like that's gonna be too many rows for my foot. And this might actually still be a little bit too long for my foot. So I'm not quite sure why there is so much gusset here. Um, but maybe that's how the designer's foot is and maybe she needs a longer gusset. So if you had a high instep, this is a great pattern for you because there is quite a bit of room through here. I mean, it's a little bit baggy. So I may try to figure out how, like, you know, do the 64 stitch sock, but maybe do the gusset for the, for the 56 stitch sock or something, just so that the gusset isn't quite as long. But I don't know if that would mess up my rows for the, the heel flap. I don't know. I don't know these things, but it is, it's a little baggy. Um, and then the, sh the, the heel turn in, does involve wraps and turns which I am not crazy about. I don't really like doing wraps and turns, but it's a lovely written pattern and it's not hard to do. I just have a hard time seeing the wrap. Like when I do the stitch, when I go back to, cause you know, then like you wrap, I don't remember what the pattern says to do, but you wrap, you're doing them in a row. <laughs> um, I can't see them very well. And so I may change the pattern to, instead of doing wraps, do the twin stitch from the fish lips kiss heel and see if I like that better. So I might try that for the second sock. I'll let you know how it goes. So I'm up the up the heel, I mean the leg, and I've actually started working on the the ribbing, but I only have like two rows done. So I'll probably be able to finish these today. And I want to immediately cast on the second one. So but yeah, I just it's baggy. It's a, I, I feel like the gusset is a little bit there's too much gusset. Overkill. <laughs> But, you know, 
I still like it. I and I want this. I really want to like this pattern and for my toe up socks, have it be my go to for for knitting toe up socks because I love how traditional it looks like a it looks like a proper sock. Um, so anyway, this is Opal from Deep Stash, sweet and spicy too, and it's Cake Pops is the color. I'm sure many of you have seen this color. It's been around for a little while. I, I you might be able to still get it somewhere, but I, I don't know. But I, I love it. I've really, really enjoyed knitting this. I just cast this on on Sunday, and it is Wednesday, so I'm almost done. For me, that's that's knitting a sock quickly. <laughs> Three or four days is quick for me. So, so yeah. And the other thing is, when I was done doing the heel turn and the slip stitch heel, and I was ready to go back into the round. There are no gusset holes. Like, it's very smooth. I only had to pick up one stitch on one side. I think it was this side. But it's just, I love how smooth it is. So I'm a fan. I just have to make sure that these fit me. Because <laughs> I am concerned that there, there's too much fabric for the gusset. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about that. <clears throat> it's been in my Halloween bag that I love and I use all year round. And I still have this entire fabric collection to make a Halloween quilt. And I haven't even cut it out yet. But maybe I will this weekend. Because <laughs> now I'll have a year to work on it. Okay, let's talk about the 12 Socks of Christmas Cow. So this is the third annual 12 Socks of Christmas <laughs> knit along. And it starts today, November 1st. I have opened up the chatter thread in the Love Sock Wool Podcast Ravelry group. So if, if you aren't a member of the Love Sock Wool Podcast group, please come and join so that you can participate in our cows and giveaways. Um, so the idea of the 12 Socks of Christmas is you do not have to knit 12 pairs of socks in two months. It ends December 31st. You don't have to do that, but that, it's tongue in cheek. The idea is just knit all the Christmas sock yarns. If you've got Christmas or holiday or winter themed sock yarn in your stash, just cast it on and knit them all in, in this holiday season, because it's fun. Um, so, and the idea is that eventually you will have 12 pairs of Christmas socks. So I currently have four pairs. These are the pairs I have completed so far. This is Deck the Halls by Lone Vine Yarns, and I love them. This is probably my favorite Christmas pair so far, because I just love them, and it's on the sparkle base. And then this is gorgeous Leading Men Fiber Arts, Oh Christmas Tree. I got this, this was the November colorway of the month last year. Oh, go check out his um, shop, because his colorway of the month for November went, goes live today, and it's called Winter Wonderland. It's beautiful. It's like a speckled, but it's like a, a light background with golds and blues. It's really pretty. I want to get it so bad, but I'm, I'm on a bit of a, like, no spend sec, um, what am I trying to say? I, I can't buy anything right now, okay? <laughs> I want it so badly though. I'll have to see. Maybe if I sew some extra bags. Can get it but I, I have I'm on a very I'm on a tight budget right now um okay so my next pair is what is this it's opal on the sparkly whatever they call it and it's a hundred bosser colorway I finished these actually a month or two ago I love these I may start wearing these because I love wearing like opal and regia socks because they're so easy to wash and care for you don't have to be fussy with them but anyway, these are very, I think these are very holiday, Christmassy looking. They kind of remind me of the Nutcracker for some reason. And this colorway's been around for a while. You can still get it. I think I was just on the hotyarns.com website and they they had this colorway. They didn't have it in the sparkle, but they had it in the, the regular um, opal base. Oh, I love these so much. These might be my favorite pair too. So this is Lolo Did It Hippo for Christmas. I love it so much. You'll probably be able to get this very soon in Lauren's shop because, um, yeah, it's November. <laughs> so I love these. 
Okay, so these are the only pairs I have finished so far over the past two years or three years, whatever, of hosting the 12 Socks of Christmas. I have another pair, the um, West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colorway. I think it's called Holly Berry or something like that. They, I've been wearing them for two years. They're, they're up in my sock drawer. So I guess I have five pairs actually. All right, so here is my stack of Christmas socks that do not have second socks knit for them. Do you have a stack of these from previous 12 socks of Christmases? Because you may. Would you like to know what they are? All those colors. Look at these beautiful colors. Now this makes me want to knit Christmas socks. Okay, so maybe I'm getting excited about it after all. Okay, this is Jinx Yarns Gingerbread House. Let's put this on the sock blocker so you can just see it in all of its sock blocker glory. I don't know why I haven't knit the second one. Maybe I'll cast it on today. I hope I can find all the yarn. I think, <laughs> I think all the second balls, or, or second, the yarn for the second sock are upstairs in a basket. And I didn't bring it down. Oh well. Isn't that beautiful? This is one of Laura's, of Jinx Yarns, her most popular Christmas colorways is Gingerbread House. And I think she said she's going to be dyeing it up from now until Christmas. So you should be able to get it if you want it. And she does her shop updates on Tuesday nights. I think it's 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> I could be wrong. But she's on Etsy, um, Jinx Yarns, G-Y-N-X. And it's lovely. She's got a couple of holiday colorways. One of them is called Cheers, and it's um, several stripes, and it's inspired by all the different holiday drinks that you usually have around Christmas time, so like eggnog, mulled wine. I can't remember the other drinks, but it, it, there's actually a skein of it in her shop right now if you want to go and get it. She's got another Christmas colorway. It's called Naughty or Nice. That's the one I really want. And that was from last year's, um, her holiday line from last year. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping she dies that one up, maybe next week. But I can't buy any yarn right now. I really can't. So I may have to just watch other people knit it. <laughs> but anyway, I do love this sock tremendously. Okay, this is uh, Under the Christmas, or Under the Tree by No Makers on the sparkle base. So that needs a second sock. This is Fruitcake by No Makers. And I actually, I actually have that on the go. Hold on. I do have the second one cast on. So I have no excuse whatsoever. It's really pretty. I think it looks like a vintage Christmas postcard, the colors. And I've been keeping them in my pretty Christmas bag with the jingle bell that um, Anna Knitter from Austria sent me. Hi, Anna. <laughs> I actually have another uh, Christmas sock whip in here. Anna also sent me this last year and it's Christmas ham. I love it. <laughs> but it's still just the first sock. I'm, I'm almost done with it. So here is yet another Christmas sock. Okay. And a couple, I have a couple more. This is the, I think this is Red Heart and it's just called Christmas. And I did, a, I think I did Deborah Norville white for the which actually I don't have any more of this. I'm gonna have to go get some more white. Anyway, um, isn't this a beautiful color? It's unfortunately discontinued. I don't think it's available anymore. Um, I, I somehow managed to get two balls of it from I think Hirschners.com. I don't even know what that store is. It's some kind of craft store. Um, but it's, it's, I don't think this is available anymore. You could try eBay, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's available anymore sadly but it, it was really fun to knit it is so Christmassy it's perfect and I think they will wear really really well as well 
Okay, no makers. This, I think, is to be jolly, but it might be tis the season. I'm not sure. You'd have to go look at the No Makers website to check. And I think she's she's dyeing all the Christmas colorways right now. So um, No Makers has amazing Christmas colorways if you're looking for, for yarns to purchase for Christmas. Um, and th this is actually a sock for Ben because this is um, 72 stitches. So, yeah. Goodness, I knit these. I wonder if I knit a hundred rows for the leg. I must have. I'll have to go back and check. And I did fish lips kiss heel. And hopefully these will fit him. They should. It's kind of loose on the. I think I must have done the sock toe decreases from Susan B. Anderson's smooth operator pattern. I must have because they're all right, right together. Okay, I think that's all I have for for Christmas socks. Now, colorways that I never got around to casting on last year, I've got two Vine Christmas colorways. I've got the Bouche de Noel, which was in the, the Scrappy Socks. Where did I put the Scrappy Socks? Where are they? They're right here and right in front of my nose, which is this, um, oh, where is it? Here we go. This is Bouche de Noel. I have that, and I really want to knit Christmas socks with those. And then I also have Not a Creature with Stirring. <clears throat> it's not even wound up yet, but actually, this is Not a Creature with Stirring, but it's on the Volca base. I have it on Blitzed, the Sparkle base, and that's the one I want to knit socks with. So, I don't think I've got any other Christmas colorways. If I had a wish list, which I do in my head, it's Jinx Yarns, Naughty or Nice. I love that colorway. Winter Wonderland from Lady Man Fiber Arts. And then Gnome Acres has a colorway called Ooh, Elf Pooped in My Stocking. <laughs> I have to get that just for the name. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, I can't buy yarn right now. I have to be good. Maybe in a couple weeks. I'm trying to be really good with my budget for a while before I let my myself purchase any yarn. So hold me to it. If you see me post a new yarn on Instagram, you need to be saying to me, why did you buy yarn? Because you said you weren't going to buy yarn. So you have to hold me accountable. Okay, what else have I been working on? That's all the socks. What is in here? Cozy memories in my royal mail bag. I adore and I have not been able to find any more of this fabric I'm gonna keep looking but I have not been able to find more of it <clears throat> oh I'm knitting um hippo for Halloween I need to finish this one <laughs> isn't that fun I love the cozy memories I always will okay so I must have finished a row because I obviously started a, a new side Okay, I'm trying to remember where I was. I think I was on this row. So, so this was a lovely mini that um, uh, Shauna of Adelaide Cottage sent me, and it's Maker's Haven. And then this is um, Hedgehog Fibers. Um, what's it called? Oh, it's a potluck, and I got it at the Stephen B. Yarn Shop. And then this is Grandma Sue's Geraniums. I just really wanted to see how it knit up in a little square. I love it. And this is Leading Men Fiber Arts. Rumor has it. And this was the colorway of the month. I think for May, if I'm not mistaken. And this is Enjoy the Silence by Bullen Vine Yarns. And I finished that pair of socks. Um, last month, I think. I love this row. So what I my goal for my cozy memories blanket for the rest of the year, I very loose loosely held goal. All of my goals are very loosely held is I'm trying to knit into my 
squares into my blanket of all the finished socks, finished pairs of socks I've knit this year. So I went through my box of socks and I, some of them I've already knit into the blanket, but there were about 10 that I had not added to my blanket. So I pulled all those leftover yarns from those pairs of socks and put them into one Ziploc bag. And those are the squares that are like high priority to knit into the blanket because I want to get those, those knit into this. So if I can be like, oh, those are all the socks I knit this year. So yes, I think that is it. I have a little bit of stash enhancement, but I have to go get it. So before I do, I will show you some bags that I've been sewing for the shop that I actually have just listed today. Um, one of them has sold. I saw an order come through just now while I was recording, so I'm not sure which one was purchased, but um, I do have two more um, Anne of Green Gables, Christmas set Green Gables. So this is the, the solid fabric with the red snowflakes. And all of the bags are lined with red ticking because I love it. Pretty much all my bags are lined with either red stripe ticking or blue stripe ticking because it goes with everything and I, I just love it. There's a vintage quality to it. It's kind of timeless. Then I have a pieced one, which I love. And this is with the silver snowflakes and a silver zipper and red ticking. And then I've got um, three of the candy cane holiday bags. And this is fabric by Cotton and Steel. I love Cotton, Cotton and Steel. Their fabric is just so nice to work with. And again, red stripe ticking. So there are three of these and they are all listed in the shop now. If you want to go take a, take a peek if you're needing a holiday bag and I have many more holiday bags um, coming up. Um, hold on one moment. I will grab some fabric to show you. Okay. I got my fabric. <clears throat> so if you missed out on the Anne of Green Gables Christmas at Green Gables, sock bags. I have lots more fabrics. So I've got this one with like a kind of a bronzy snowflake. And then I've got more of the green toile and more of the red snowflake. I've got to make myself one. And then I've got red toile. And they'll all be lined with red ticking. And um, some of them will have red handles. And some of them will have green handles. I haven't decided which will get which. <laughs> and then I have, I got some, I threw this in with my order as well. So there's a fabric collection, I forget the manufacturer, but the, the fabric line is called Nordic Stitches. And it, it's a Christmas, um, oh wait, it says right here. Oh, it's by, Mo, by Moda. I think it's Bench Wolf Hating of Northern Quilts for Moda. But look how, look how Scandinavian. It's like a stand, uh, it's called Nordic Christmas, I think. Or is it called Nordic Lights? I'm losing my mind. Hold on, let me look and see if it says on the selvage. Nordic Stitches, that's like what I said. And then I have it, I'm gonna piece it with, with this one. Isn't that fun? So it's like a red and navy. So a more Scandinavian holiday bag. I really wanna make one for myself, but. Um, I'll try not to. I'll try to only make them for you. <laughs> so I'm excited about, about those bags, so I will get working on those. <sighs> I'm waiting on some supplies to get here, so they actually will not be able to go live until the week after next, because we're going to Chicago next weekend, um, so that it's interrupting my, my regular flow. But anyway, I'm excited to sew up more Christmas at Green Gables bags and um, in these Nordic stitches. So I hope you're excited about them too. Okay, so I have a tiny little bit of stash enhancement, which I purchased before I stopped buying yarn. <laughs> so I got the October sock kit for, um, or little sock kit from Maker's Haven. Isn't that pretty? And it was inspired by a Elsa Besco book, The Butterfly Children, is that right? I'm sorry, Amber, if I'm getting that wrong. But that author is a lovely illustrator, author of children's books. I believe she's German, or was German, I believe. She's passed away now. But we have the Root Children, and we have the Butterfly Children. 
There's several of them and the illustrations are so beautiful. Like, oh, tiny vintage. I should have brought one of the books down to show to you. They're so pretty. Maybe I can insert a photo at the end so you can see some Elsa Besco. I'm not even sure if I'm saying the author's name right. I need to go check. I apologize, Amber, if I'm messing up your inspiration. <laughs> but isn't that pretty? I might just throw this in my um, Maker's Haven Gartery Goodness by Stephen West, which is right here. Oh, where's my turtle? There we go. So this is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ron Weasley by Maker's Haven. But I, I may have to throw in, oh, that one looks so pretty in here. Because I want this garter goodness to be all Maker's Haven yarn. So I think that will look nice. Oh, I did, for, I forgot. I do, I always have more sock whips. If I ever say I'm done, I'm not. <laughs> Let me grab this little basket. Because I did cast on the September um, little sock kit from Maker's Haven. Which one? This was inspired by, if I'm not mistaken, this fabric collection, the Boo fabric collection. And here it is. I'm knitting it shorter than I would normally knit a sock whip because, or knit a sock because um, the amount you get, sorry, you get 50 grams of the main color and then 20 in the mini. So it's 70 grams total, which should be plenty, but I don't know, for some reason it, it seems like such a small, <laughs> it seems like a small ball, so I'm just going to be, I'm being conservative with my length of my leg. It's really pretty, it's knitting up so pretty. So if I have any leftovers, I will put it in the Maker's Haven Gartery Goodness. Okay, I did work a little bit more on another Regia Pear Effect sock, I forgot to mention that I'm just started the heel flap here it's quite nice they knit themselves when you actually knit on them and then I do have one more sock whip that I completely forgot and just saw when I went to go get um, the yarn so this is the October colorway of the month by Lady Mud Fiber Arts and it is called trap door and it is speckle tastic it's kind of actually a little bit Halloween-y. I like it. I love it. And I this is a 72 stitch sock I cast on for Ben. Hopefully I can have these be his Christmas socks, but I just don't know if I will be able to get them done in time. Because now I want to knit all the Christmas socks. I could finish him the the um I could finish him this one and those could be his Christmas socks. That's probably what I should do. But I love this. I love that speckle right there <laughs> and then I'm doing knit picks agate heather is that color I believe stroll and I did the Hermione's everyday sock the slightly modified eye of partridge heel flap pattern <laughs> and a square toe or dutch heel turn because it makes the gusset not as long because you have less stitches after the heel turn Okay, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to show you. I will try to go find the books that this amazing sock yarn is inspired by. I will go upstairs and look. I think it's in Marshall's room. So I think that is all I have to speak to you about. Hmm, I've been sewing a lot for the shop. There are bags listed now and I'm excited to get going on the next batch of Anna Green Gables bags. I really do love this fabric so much. <laughs> so I'm hoping to work on that over the weekend. And I'm like I said, I'm waiting for supplies to get here so I can't list them until my, um, I'm actually waiting for the, the stickers for my bottle cap to come. And the shipping is slow because I'm too cheap to pay for quicker shipping so it just delays things. Um, and then we're going to Chicago next weekend for, um, just for fun, for the weekend. And so I probably won't be able to list them until we get back. So I hope you all are doing well and I hope you're excited about the 12 Socks of Christmas. Um, please come and chatter in the chatter thread. Um, frankly, I am on Instagram more than I am on the Ravelry group. So there is a hashtag for the 12 Socks of Christmas for this year and it's hashtag 
12SOC2018. I'll put it in the down bar. So if you're on Instagram and you're posting what you're working on for this cow, please use that hashtag and then we can all see it. And it, yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> so have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy first day of November. And I will um, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, so I was completely wrong, which is <laughs> no surprise. So the lovely Maker's Haven was actually inspired by this author, Elsa Besco, the, um, the Children of the Forest. This is the one that I have, which is Emily and Daisy, which is an adorable story about a little girl and a cow. It's very, very cute. But for some reason, I was confusing this author with this author, Sybil von Olfers, which is, they're, they're similar, it's a similar aesthetic, I think, for the illustrations. But these are the books that I was thinking of when I saw um, Amber's post on Instagram about the sock kit. So I'm sorry, Amber, I got it completely wrong, but it's still a fun discussion about children's literature because these are lovely books to read to your children. And these are just some of them. But for some reason, I was c confusing them. So, correction. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I just thought I would, I would show you that. Okay. Bye for real now.